The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome, welcome to Unhinge. Today, we do have a very special guest, Mr. John Polly. Let's jump in. You ready? All right, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a bit busy. It they, takes a second to take it all in. Yeah. Somebody loves their A-phones and their HIDs. Thank oh, guy. my. You got a thin line, too. You got the, the HID 5-inch reader. A-phones and video A-phone galore. Like, oh. I don't see what the problem is. Just scan your fob to get in. Just scan your fob. Just stick it like three inches away from all of it. It's going <laughs> to pick up just something. Just do, do, do one of these. And you, you, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do I jump up and down? Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I got it. No, shuffle over here. It's the other one. <laughs> sorry. The initial response is... Um, uh, my OCD is killing me. Little bitty things, but it's not deal killers. But again, you've got lines that don't match, right? You've got things that are at angles, all that. I get it. It's on a concrete wall, but geez, you can still use a level. Um, <laughs> so I have to assume this is a multi-tenant building because I really hope that that's not like going, press the button on the left to go to the back dock and the button on the right to the, go to the front door and the button in the middle for the video intercom to go to the CEO who's never going to answer. I hope that it's a multi-tenant building, but otherwise that just gets to be like, hey, we didn't want to leave a hole in the wall, so we just put something over the top of it. Is there a um, duck on the keypad on the right hand side good eye yes it looks like they painted or painter's tape or maybe duct tape something to hold that together maybe it got busted or someone tried to be a spy and pop off the reader and try to do something and they duct taped it back to the cement i thought that was like a homemade weather shield that somebody had done I and mean, maybe they're trying to weatherproof it <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that's electrical tape and then duct tape underneath it good eye me i didn't see that yeah i feel like that may be somebody's version of a weatherproof or something. You're almost speechless, John. It's it's. I, a, I, to... I am. You know, I'm actually just happy to see that there's red lights on everything instead of like they could have done it where they wired up the green LED on one of them just to be different. Like <laughs> here, to you know, put your fob three inches away, but make sure you get to the one that looks green because that's ours. I'm guessing you're right, John. I'm pretty sure this has got to be some kind of multi-purpose use or uh, multi-tenant like downstairs is like retail space and then multi-family above maybe or something like that. And, you know, they didn't coordinate on the different access systems like they've all got their different wire run going there. There's a lot of software out there that could really streamline this process and essentially do this all in one, right? Like one uh, phone box slash reader. I feel like there's a better way to do this. And they took the hard route here. Well, they did. But even then, I want to go back to the iPhones. You have two iPhone boxes. Why didn't you put one on top of the other and say, sweet one, sweet two, whatever it is? Like, what made you think, Ooh, let me put this one on the other side of that? But it's obviously a calculated decision to do this. It wasn't just like, hey, let me slap this one up here. Somebody had to make a decision. And I think it's going to look better this way than like stacked in a row and, you know, not look like somebody sneezed on the wall. The only thing that I can think is the one on the left was there before the keypad was put in. And then the one on the right was put in after both of those were put in. Because why would the boxes not be at the same height, right? Yeah. Like one had to go in first. But the left one had to go in first because if the right one was in first, why wouldn't you have just set them at the same height? Yeah, I don't know. And the other thing that these readers have a, an RF feel to them, like sticking your readers that close, you're going to get interference. I would wonder if any of their tenants have ever said, hey, my card doesn't work real good. Like I got to stick this thing right up on it, jump up and down and wiggle it back and forth before it reads because that five inch reader is giving a lot more RF off than little thin line two is. And so I'm sure that they've probably got some service issues that are going on with this site aside from aesthetically code compliance issues none could you have done it better yes should you have done it better absolutely take a little bit of care in your craft and map it out and if you're not the first one there okay figure out how to make it right if somebody already took the real estate you want figure out how to work within that real estate that doesn't look like eh, it just goes somewhere here maybe here maybe there well you'll find me I'm, I'm over here maybe this tech or the multiple techs on there are just trying to be like like an abstract artist, you know, like things kind of make sense, but not really. It's like, it's art, you know, just throw a bunch of paint up against the wall, just throw a bunch of readers up there and it is art. What was the line? Yes, I'm showing my age and my kids. There was a movie with robots with Robin Williams and I'm trying to remember what he called it. It was art and something else and it came out as trash. It was like, yep, there you go. So anyway, it's not a life safety issue to me, but six or seven on 
knockability just of clean it up, take care of your clients. The folks in the multifamily space or the tenants probably look at that every day and go, man, that looks like garbage. And this is why they've gone through four or five different integrators in the process, probably. So two cents on that. Two comments here, real fast. I'm surprised they don't have a sign or something that explains how to use any of these. I feel like there should be like a diagram here. Like if you're here for <laughs> here, you got to touch this button or something like that. And then second comment is, I agree with you, John. Like this is the first impression of your building. Like if you think about that, like they're walking up to your building and they're trying to get into this. They're frustrated. That's leaving a negative effect as they enter through your doors. Not many people realize how much door hardware and access control affect the user experience of your buildings. But if people don't feel safe, people don't feel clean, people don't feel comfortable there, they're not going to love the experience of your building. And so I think you touched on something that we didn't talk about there. And we haven't really talked about user experience a lot on this series, but this is user experience right here. And what are you saying to your end user, your customer? It's like I had a client who had a lobby that looked very dingy. It looked dated, but, but it was a very high-end building. And I looked at him and said, you're going to want to change some lighting and do some refresh of your paint. And they're like, well, why would I do that? And I said, okay, you know, as we talked about Android and Apple, you know, all throughout the other one, I said, there's Walmart and Target. Which one do you shop at? Well, I shop at Target. I said, why? Well, because it looks clean and it's brightly lit. Walking almost every Walmart, it does not look clean. It looks dingy and the lighting tends to be lower. So maybe you can't see what's actually on the clothing. I don't know because I still shop at Walmart and Target. But you walk into Walmart and have a different sense than if you walk into Target. It is that first impression from lighting to functionality of the readers will give you that initial impression. And it is going to set the tone for any customer experience. It's going to set the tone for employees that walk in. If an employee walks up and sees this, do I need to put forward my best effort in my job today or is okay good enough? Because this is what you're saying is okay is good enough. Right. According to this, somebody accepted this and said, yes, okay is good enough. Hey, Mia, do you want to give this a knocking score? Yeah. So I think it's a one for life safety, but it's a nine for aesthetic. And so I guess that averages me to a five, but yeah. I was at a six. So, you know, at least I'm on the same page. Yeah. Okay. So you're going with five. Yeah. But it also calls into question. Like, I really wonder what any of their doors look like, because if they're allowing this for <laughs> the readers and no. stuff, like, yeah, no, we... I don't wonder, because I'm sure Benji <laughs> may have another picture of one of those. <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, <laughs> I would say, again, I don't think they're breaking any code compliance or anything like that. I don't know. This looks a little high. Maybe the top thing is not ADA compliant, but I would say overall, not too knocking bad. But, you know, OCD, John mentioned that. I mean, with OCD, it's almost like it's either a 10 or it feels okay, right? Like it's, this, I think, is a 10 from aesthetic, user experience, all of the above. So that you probably know, averages out again. Going back though, Benji, and you just mentioned it in terms of ADA compliance, one of those readers is not going to be compliant because you've got to be 48 inches to center for ADA. Either one's really low or one's really high or two are really high. And I don't, I, I feel like one of them probably started out at ADA compliant and then that big five inch one got brought in. It may actually be sitting too low for even ADA compliance. And so that may adjust that knock score a little bit just because it's not being able to see where the floor is. It does affect it, but something's going to be, you know, years go back, you put your card in your back pocket and it was your butt height where you could lift a cheek and sit it on the reader and that was, they actually, we put things up because that was the expectation was that you could open the door with your backside. Well, I mean, John, you're a tall guy. So your backside <laughs> is a little higher than uh, I would say average. It is. Years ago, I had a boss. I said, what height do you want this at? Thinking he was going to give me a number. He's like, oh, chest height. Okay. I'm six foot three. I put it at chest height. He walked up to it and he was about five <laughs> foot four. He was looking at the keypad eye level. One of the first keypads I'd put up and I was like, next time, tell me the height you want me to put it at. Don't just go somewhere over here because I'm going to put it where you tell me and you tell me chest height and I'm going to put it at my chest height, not your chest height. Yeah. Give me a number. So uh, I forgot what the exact allowance for ADA compliance, but that's about a foot and a half of readers and telephone. Something's not compliant in there, at, in that range, right? Like I know it's yeah. not that big of a section. Okay. No. Not too knocking bad, but you know, it makes us cringe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ready for the next one? I am. If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, or if you have a picture to submit, you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com. Thanks for watching.